Folks, the internet is rigged. Let me emphasize that. The, the internet is rigged. The internet is rigged. Social media is rigged. And people like me have known that for a long time. Social media is rigged to silence anti-imperialists, to cancel people that are against the status quo, to promote whatever the establishment is promoting, to suppress suppress whatever the establishment is suppressing, to demonize Russia and China and Iran and Venezuela, to demonize dissident voices, to prop up the deep state, the FBI, the CIA, and what they want to promote. We now know it's rigged thanks to something called the Twitter files. Now, we all knew it was rigged for a long time, but now we have proof that it's rigged. Matt Taibbi was leaked all kinds of information. He provided the Twitter files, and now he's testified about it before Congress. And I just want to show you some highlights. Thanks to the thanks to the social media, the Twitter of, uh, of, of Max Blumenthal and Aaron Maté, I'm going to show you some highlights from Matt Taibbi's recent testimony before the U.S. Congress about how social media is rigged. This is testimony before the U.S. Congress by journalist Matt Taibbi. There's a lot of great clips here. But anyone who tries to tell you, oh, no, it's not rigged. It's just whatever is popular. It doesn't know what they're talking about. This is journalist Matt Taibbi before the U.S. Congress. Member Plaskett, I would note that the evidence of Twitter government relationship includes lists of tens of thousands of names on both the left and right. The people affected include Trump supporters, but also left-leaning sites like Consortium and Truthout, the leftist South American channel Telesur, the Yellow Vest movement, that in fact is a key point of the Twitter files, that it's neither a left nor right issue. Did you hear that? It's neither a left nor right issue. They suppress Trump supporters, but they also suppress Telesur, the TV network from Venezuela, a socialist country. They also suppress anti-war websites like Consortium News. And it's really important that he said this. I'm going to show Matt Taibbi say this one more time. It's really important. Because th this is this is a really important thing to point out. They suppress both left and right voices. They have a whole list of people, Twitter has, that they have rigged social media against. They've rigged Twitter against certain people. Here's what he said. Again, Ranking Member Plaskett, I would note that the evidence of Twitter government relationship includes lists of tens of thousands of names on both the left and right. Tens of thousands of names. There's tens of thousands of people that the FBI and the CIA have gone to Twitter and said, make sure people don't listen to them. Now, is that democracy? That's bullshit is what that is. Can you imagine this? In, in a so-called democracy, in a place where there's an open free market of ideas, we have the FBI and the CIA and the deep state going to social media companies and saying, providing a list of tens of thousands of people and saying, we don't want people to listen to them. Can you make sure people don't listen to them? People affected include Trump supporters, but also left-leaning sites like Consortium and Truthout. Consortium and Truthout, left-leaning site, leaning sites. The leftist South American channel Telesur. The leftist South American channel Telesur. The Yellow Vest Movement. The Yellow Vest Movement in France, the working class uprising in, in France. That, in fact, is a key point of the Twitter files, that it's neither a left nor right issue. It's neither a left nor right issue. And this is really important, because what do all the stupid liberals say, if you ever bring this up? All the Rachel Maddow fans, if you bring this up, they're like, that's right wing. That's right wing. That's a right wing conspiracy theory. No, no, sir, sir, it is not rigged. Social media is not rigged. If you think that, sir, you are a right winger. Thinking that Twitter and social media is rigged makes you like a neo-Nazi. Everything we see on Twitter and social media is good for us. And it's good that the government is deciding what we watch because if you're against it, you must be a neo-Nazi. Oh my God. A neo-Nazi, right? Well, it's not just right wing. It's left wing. People like me that are leftists and have a mile long credential as leftists, but we dare stand up against their wars. We dare stick 
to working class politics, and we don't jump on the woke bandwagon, we don't make every conversation about pronouns and genitals, and because of that, they have rigged it against us as well. So no, no, it is not a right-wing thing. And also, even if it was, just pointing at something and saying, that's right-wing, that doesn't make it wrong. You know, I mean, if, if George W. Bush said the sky is blue, if Donald Trump said the sky is blue, would the sky not be blue? I mean, if, if Donald Trump said the sky is blue, and I said, well, you know, I, I heard, you know, Donald Trump said the sky is blue. Oh, my God, he's spreading Trumpian conspiracy theories. Well, maybe it's true. Maybe it's true. You know, I mean, it, it's like they have they have brainwashed. The way the neoconservatives used to be is the way the liberals are now. It used to be during the Bush years, if you said, hey, there weren't any mass weapons of mass destruction in Iraq, they'd be like, oh, my God, are you a liberal? Do you hate America? Are you working for the terrorists? And now it's the same kind of mindset. If you say social media is rigged, they say, oh, my God, are you a neo-Nazi? You must be a white supremacist. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. You're in QAnon. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. You're questioning. I mean, it's the same mindset. These people that are just just establishment drones. That is the people that, that that you have to talk to. And he just pointed out there, it is not an issue of left or right. It is certain ideas that the deep state, the FBI, the CIA, the Pentagon, the military industrial complex, the powerful entities that dominate US society, the big monopolies don't want to get out there. It's not left or right. It's anti-establishment versus establishment. And there's so many other great clips from the Matt Taibbi testimony before Congress. And let's let's bring them up. The reactions of the members of Congress to him are particularly crazy. Here's another one. Act on your ethics. You weren't given really an opportunity to answer. And if you'd be brief, I've got a bunch of stuff I want to ask you as well. Sure. Just quickly, the, the, that moment on the Joe Rogan show, I was actually recounting a section from Seymour Hersh's book, Reporter, where he described a scene where the CIA gave him a story and he was very uncomfortable. Uh, he said that I, who had always gotten the secrets, was being handed the secrets. It, look, again, I've done lots of whistleblower stories. There's always a balancing test that you make when you're given material and you're always balancing newsworthiness versus the motives of your sources. In this case, the newsworthiness clearly outweighed any other considerations, and I think everybody else who worked on the project agreed. Now, what Matt Taibbi is responding to here is this argument of like, oh my God, Elon Musk is right-wing, and he gave this to you. Don't you think he's using this to push his right-wing agenda? And he's saying... Yeah, you know, whenever someone gives you information, you have to balance whether it's newsworthy. You have to verify that it's true and why they might be sending it to, to you. But in this instance, yes, Elon Musk, for his own reasons, decided to provide this information to Matt Taibbi. And he ethically felt that the fact that the government is colluding with Twitter to try and manipulate political discourse in America is worth reporting on. And he's responding to these dumb arguments. Well, Elon Musk gave it to you because he has an agenda. Maybe. But, you know, uh, if Elon Musk revealed, uh, you know, that a, a child molester was raping a bunch of children, would you say, oh, I can't I can't go report that to the police because Elon Musk has an agenda? Of course not. Right. I mean, something wrong is happening, which is that the government is colluding with Twitter to suppress people with dissident views. And it doesn't matter if Elon Musk or the devil himself or, or you know, or Adolf Hitler provided the information. If Matt Taibbi could verify that it's true, which he did, he did verify that these are real emails. It wasn't a fraud. It wasn't fake emails. And he did verify that indeed the FBI is cooperating with Twitter to try and suppress anti-imperialist views. Doesn't matter if Elon Musk gave it to him because he has an agenda. It's true. Right. So that's just a bullshit argument. And he defended himself from that point. Here's some more Matt Taibbi testimony. This stuff is gold. And and the Congress members responding to him. I mean, that's just I mean, it gets rich. It gets rich. Uh, he, this is a member of Congress talking to Matt Taibbi. I hope that you can actually take this with you, because I honestly hope that you will grapple with this. That it may be possible that if we can take off the tinfoil hat 
that there's not a vast conspiracy, but that ordinary folks and national security, security agencies responsible for our security are trying their best to find a way to make sure that our online discourse doesn't get people hurt or see our democracy undermined. And that the very rights that you think they're trying to undermine, they may be trying to protect. Can you please just have faith in our leaders? Can you please just trust the people that are suppressing certain views? Can you just take off your tinfoil hat for a minute and say that they're just trying to keep us safe and that's why they don't want people criticizing the U.S. invasion of Iraq and that's why they don't want people criticizing us sending weapons to terrorists and that's why they don't want people talking about the heroin gangs in Afghanistan. Can't you just take off your tinfoil hat and and be like me, be a true blind believer and assume assume that the American deep state is just going to do the right thing. Don't you love that? Don't you love that? And it's like what that guy is doing there is like the very people that rig social media can help him win an election. That's what's going on there. And that guy's elected to Congress and he wants the backing of the deep state. He wants the algorithms to be rigged in his favor. He wants negative news stories about him to go bye-bye. And he wants positive stories about him to go everywhere. And he wants negative stories about his opponents. And so he's saying, don't you think we should just trust the deep state? Don't you think we should just trust the FBI? Are you listening, guys? I'm defending you from this hooligan. I'm helping you rig the algorithms, so can you rig it for me? That's what he's saying here. That's what he's saying here. And it's just like he's not even making, can't you just take off the tinfoil hat? That's not an argument. And, and this is one thing that really, really annoys me. Whenever whenever they're defending themselves, whenever the establishment is defending themselves, they fall back on this. You'll notice, I'll play the clip again. Does he at any point say that anything Matt Taibbi said was false? Does he debunk it? Does he put forward a single argument to debunk anything Matt Taibbi said. Listen for any argument here. Is there a single, a single logical fallacy, factual inaccuracy he points to? Is there anything that Matt Taibbi says that he debunks here? And I think, I hope that you can actually take this with you because I honestly hope that you will grapple with this. Not an argument. That it may be possible that if we can take off the tinfoil hat, not an argument. That there's not a vast conspiracy. Not an argument. But that ordinary folks and national security agencies responsible for our security are trying their best. Not an argument. To find a way to make sure that our online discourse doesn't get people hurt. Not an argument. Or see our democracy undermined. Not an argument. And that the very rights that you think they're trying to undermine, they may be trying to protect. Not an argument. That none of that is an argument against anything he said. You know, a man, I mean, what if you were like there was a, a murder trial and they put the, the, the prosecution put forward all kinds of evidence that this person was guilty of murder, you know, and, and they, they showed the knife and his fingerprints on the knife. And then he gets up in front of the jury and let's just for a moment imagine that maybe he didn't do it. And maybe there's no vast conspiracy. I mean, maybe all the evidence put forward isn't true. Let's just imagine for a minute that the defendant is completely innocent. Let's just imagine, take the tinfoil hat off your head now. That's not an argument. That's not an argument. I mean, this is like ridiculous. And this is the same kind of like, this is like normie bullying, right? Mm -hmm. It's when they say, take the tinfoil hat off your head, what they're saying is you don't want to be one of those crazy people who thinks wrong. You don't want people to point at you and laugh. You don't want to get canceled on social media for thinking wrong, right? So you're a good person who follows the rules and doesn't get, doesn't get bullied for being a dissident, right? And they always do this. And it's like they use arguments like everybody knows. At one point, I was at the U.S. State Department. I was at, and I asked Heather Nauert a question about a chemical weapons attack. And she replied with, everybody knows. Well, everyone knows is not an argument. And everyone does not know. There's a lot of dissident you know, questions regarding, uh, regarding chemical weapons in Syria and all that. And she just said, well, everybody knows. Everybody knows. Everybody knows. That's not an argument. Everybody knows is not an argument. There's no vast conspiracy. It's not an argument. Take the tinfoil hat off your head. It's not an argument. If someone puts forward an allegation, 
and has evidence to back it up, which Twitter files, there's loads of emails, documented emails that actually happened to back up everything Matt Taibbi says. The whole reason he did this is because Elon Musk became the leader of Twitter and gave him all these documents proving that social media is being rigged to suppress dissidents. And then, and then he presented what was actually there. And you saying, take the tinfoil hat off your head or say there's no vast conspiracy. The emails are there. We see the communication between the Twitter employees and the FBI. We see it with our own eye. It is, it, it, the smoking gun is there. It's infuriating, infuriating to watch people do this especially when they're they're doing it to shill for the establishment. These are the politicians that are going to be like, I'm going to fight for you. No, you're not. You're going to call us crazy. Here's another one. That you disagree with the two indictments by special counsel Robert Mueller that definitively established that Russia interfered in our 2016 election through social media disinformation and a hack and leak operation? No, I don't disagree. Okay, Mr. Taibbi, do you disagree with those two indictments? How do you dis? There are things in indictments that turn out not to be true all the time. You know, people, when they're indicted, the indictment will say one thing. And by the time the prosecutor has done all kinds of investigation and they have an actual trial, the actual evidence and the narrative of the prosecution is completely different at the trial. Well, indi- I don't, indictments aren't a thing to disagree. Do you disagree? An indictment. That's just the, the government bringing charges against somebody. That's all an indictment is. So they're asking him, do you disagree with these indictments? It's like, how should he know? They're about 40 or 50 pages. Do you disagree? With- oh, they're long. Oh, they're they're 40 or 50 pages. They must be true. Now, do you, do you agree that this thing that a prosecutor wrote to bring charges against someone, do you disagree with it? Well, with the evidence outlined in those indictments. Well, indictments are just charges. When, when, when I just when asked you, do you disagree? Indictments are just charges. He's pointing out. Indictments are just charges. I disagree with the evidence included in those indictments. Yes or no? I'm not on the jury of that case. I couldn't possibly say yes or no. Okay, because... Like, and so they're asking him about a, uh, about, about a case. They're asking him if he agrees with something federal prosecutors put forward. And he's like, what? I don't know. I haven't... I mean, this is an absurd question. You said earlier, I believe, that you did not see Russia... You, you could not confirm that Russia interfered in our election in 2016, that you don't believe that. Is that your testimony here today? You don't believe that they did? I think it's possible that they they may have on a small scale, but certainly not to what's been reported. What's been reported or what's been included in the indictments? Well, again, indictments are allegations. They're not proof. And I understand. And, and, it's pretty and, detailed allegations. In the so. Mueller- yeah, they're asking him to verify something that the federal prosecutors wrote. You indictment, should, by the way. You should go read the indictment and then come back and tell us if you actually think there's no proof of it. Well, but let me move on. Some, some of you- the- I mean, it's like... He's saying, I don't know what is exactly in this indictment, but why should I confirm that it's true just because it's in a federal indictment? Please, please, by the way, when please let me move on. That's how this works. You should know that by now. So do you disagree with the special counsel Mueller's conclusion in his report, Mr. Taibbi, that the Trump campaign knew about Russia's interference, they welcomed it, and they used it for their benefit? You have no reason to disagree with that, don't you? You have no information. So after that foreign interference in our 2016 election, Twitter and other social media companies naturally wanted to work with the intelligence community to stop Vladimir Putin from interfering in our elections again. Mr. Taibbi, do you think it's a legitimate pursuit of the FBI to try to stop foreign interference in our elections? Again, sir, will I be allowed to answer this question or? or... It's a yes or no question. Do you think it's a legitimate pursuit of the FBI? It's not a yes or no answer. No, 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 no. I'm not asking how. I'm saying, as an objective, do you think it's a legitimate objective of the FBI to stop foreign interference in our elections? I think it's a legitimate objective to stop actual foreign interference. Okay. Earlier, yeah, obviously, testimony- right? If there was like a foreign government that was going to rig the voting machines or something, sure. If there was a foreign government that was going to, you know, you know, like, you know, like, you know, cause the electricity to go out so that no one could go vote that day and suppress voter turnout, sure. But the FBI going after people on social media who post memes, people on social media who who tweet things and, and might be disagreeing with the prevailing narrative and feeding into Russian narrative. That's ridiculous, right? I mean, I mean, it's it's the whole thing is just particularly ridiculous. But